Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm invisible. Sorry? You're invisible? Yeah. Oh, you'd like to be invisible? No, I'm invisible to others so that my mom doesn't call me. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's a good idea. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, how are you today? Um, I'm, are you recording? Because I can see my laundry basket. Right? <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. That laundry basket looks fine. There's nothing too okay. stinky in it. Is that from Ikea? Uh, yes, actually. Yeah, Good. I've got one of those. <laughs> nice laundry basket. Can I introduce you to the... Well, the of the These are our students here. This is the gang. Gang, this is... Oh, well, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I was trying to hug. Okay, don't panic. Hey. That's so, weird. we lost you for a second there. Could we... Uh, could I ask you for a formal introduction, please? Right, hello. Hello, class. <laughs> Uh, so, who are you? Uh, I'm Roman, I'm an illustrator, cartoonist. I come from Russia, which is a foreign country. <laughs> right now I'm in San Francisco. Fantastic. Where I've been for the last five years. Okay. Amazing. Um, and can, you, uh, can we have a little look around the space that you're in? I can try. It's nice, some windows over there. It's yeah, yeah it's on the parking lot, so... Okay. <laughs> it's good if you like cars. Um, so you work from home then, Roman? Yeah, I work from home. I don't have a studio because um, I can't afford it. And I like being alone all the time. Okay. <laughs> um, so so you live alone and work alone as well? Is that like a, quite an important no, space? I, uh, well, I don't live alone, right. but I do work alone. Right, most okay. Of and so um, what do you need in your studio space? What have you got there? Well, I have a large uh, drawing desk, which I can't show you because I have to rotate the entire computer. That's fine, no worries. Well, it's a pretty simple desk. Right here is a small desk where I do all the digital stuff. Okay. And uh, to the left is a bed where I lay around lounging most of the day. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's nice. That's a good description. So you, 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 do, you, you do your draftsmanship in a different space to your digital work? Well, I say different space, but it's about three steps away. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, it's not going go into a separate room. There's only one room. Okay. And is there anything interesting in that room you could show us? Any artifacts or treasures we could have a look at? Uh, not really. I'm, I'm not much of a collector. Okay. I don't have anything. I have a lot of originals from various people who are more successful than me. Okay. So I'm to sell at some point. Okay. Okay. Nicely done. And um, books, yeah. books seem quite important to you. Do you, do you read a lot? Uh, uh, books seem quite important to you. you. Have you got a bit of a collection of, of literature? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm up to get everything from the library. Okay. But I do have uh, some books. I actually have this really exciting <laughs> Edition of Tristan Shandy, which has not read, but has all the interesting mm. design things inside. Sorry, watch the book again. Oh, it's Tristan Shandy, but it's a visual edition. Right, okay. So, um, it's not quite illustrated, but it has a sort of visual interpretation of some of the more um, amusing and weird literary techniques that he employs. Okay, amazing. Yeah. So I have like... to read it, so it's just lying there. <laughs> well, you could take it to your, uh, your bed and do some lounging. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit um, in more detail about your illustration practice? Um, um, and we've got questions here, sort of what sort of, can you describe the kind of artwork that you make and where it exists? Right. Uh, well, I mainly do a tutorial illustration. Um, recently I've done a few book covers. Right now I'm working on my first children's book that I didn't write, so I'm just an illustrator that as well. Okay. Um, and then I do a lot of comics, I 
Frank and sort of little visual poems and jokes and so forth. I have a, like a vanity project that's been going for too long called Yellow Z. I actually put a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so I made this little I made this kind of zines. Okay, cool. Sort of comics inside, but not always. Um, and you, I think they're funny, but most people think they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> you described it as a vanity project. What informs the work that goes into there? Uh, just uh, trying to amuse myself, really. Okay. <laughs> and distract myself from you know staring into the void. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a good idea. <laughs> In the sense that I don't really put it in shops that much. I have one shop in the city that I like. Um, I send it to some places and there's some of gosh, but overall I, I don't pursue it as my career. You know? Right, okay. And do you think um, that's important for the, for the kind of work that you're putting in there? That you yeah. don't define its success commercially? Well, the, the more straight laced appropriate stuff I can do for editorials and books, the more I want to do something completely unappealing and unrelatable for myself. Right, okay. It's kind of, I'm to strike a balance between people liking me and people being really confused by me. <laughs> <laughs> like if I post a really appealing picture that some people like, I feel really guilty about it and I think, oh, I should do something that no one will like. <laughs> and then I'll post like, some ink smudges. Yeah, now wh where do you think that comes from? What, what do you think is making you want to work like that? Are you trying um, to... Sorry, I'll let you try and answer. Sorry, so is there like a need to be unconventional with what you're doing? No, I'm just contrarian. Right, okay. <laughs> it's a good stance. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your journey from um, from where you started to take uh, cartoons and illustrations serious to where you got to now? Okay, well, my first degree was in petroleum engineering, and I was a, a really bad engineer for like, an exceedingly mediocre engineer. Okay. So, I was an engineer. And uh, then I started drawing, again, more or less to distract myself because it was extremely boring and depressing. And uh, I think I started working semi-professionally around 2012. Right. Like I did Samsung in 2011, but it was not very good at all. Um, so I've been working for about three years, I suppose. Three years. Fantastic. And, uh, I, I only, I'm only freelance. I think, yeah, in 2012 I quit my last job. Uh, I'm thinking this fall I'm starting to teach again, which I'm really excited about. Right, okay. But, so, uh, yeah, other than that, I just freelance. I have a book agent and an illustration agent, but I mostly find work on my own. Or rather, I don't, I don't know why they, how they find it. I know. Every now and then. Are you investing a lot of time in approaching people for work, or are you finding people are coming to you at this point? Well, I, I tried a few times, but I was really bad at it. Um, Send some postcards, that didn't help. So every now and then, uh, last, I went to New York last time because I won some awards from Society of Illustrators. And I think that was helpful because I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. I stood there and people congratulated me. So, <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, this. Uh, that I really enjoyed because I had to put the effort into it. But I know people who go to New York on a regular basis, regardless of their awards, and just stalk uh, art directors and so forth. Um, I've done it once or twice, and I don't know. I think I'm, I'm a bit awkward when it comes to such interactions. Uh, okay. I suppose as part of it, just doing what you feel comfortable with, or approaching it in a way that seems true to how, well, who you are, I guess. Yeah, uh, and also, yeah, it definitely fits with my sort of public image. Of, someone who's a little bit reclusive. <laughs> and so people don't expect me to be extremely social, and that's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can, uh, can we possibly have a look at some work? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, to finish with the zines, 
here's another vanity project I made. It's uh, all right. It's an adaptation of Ronald Colvino's If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. Right. So it's, each uh, chapter is drawn in a slightly different style. The point of that was kind of to get out of my comfort zone and experiment a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So that was fun. Then I do stuff on the Visa Graph, which is um, sort of a hybrid between screen printing and the Xerox. Um, it makes this really crappy looking thing. I'm sorry, uh, is that okay? That's a crappy thing. Anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. So you printed two layers and you have to align them. Just an extremely obtuse and tedious process. Yeah. That, you know, yeah. Puts you in the of the thing. Yeah. And I've been working in Photoshop for a while where everything is very intuitive and easy. It's uh, really nice to get back to this. Yeah, kind of stuff. yeah, absolutely. Like when I add the Kickstarters, I usually make sort of bonus freezing. So this one was about Russian men swimming in fountains, and uh, I thought maybe if you have a swimming Russian man, a fountain will assemble itself around him. That's an aesthetic approach to that kind of a. Okay, then uh, there is. I had some spots in an issue of New Yorker, which was really exciting. Great stuff, amazing. They're super tiny, and um, that was one of the most fun projects I had. Uh, and this is the thing I got the award for, it's uh, for NPR, which is a radio station here, that I never listened to. <laughs> this is another thing of mine that I'm not entirely ashamed of, it's cover for SF Chronicle. Or a book review. Alright, what else? Right now I'm serializing a comic in a Canadian magazine called Measure Loop. Okay, so this is a. Are you having to contribute on a regular basis? So it's four times a year. Right, okay. So uh, it's, it's fun because I don't really know how it ends. <laughs> okay, great. It's a little bit. I'm excited to find out what's going on. <laughs> And then uh, here's the book, first book cover that I drew two and a half years ago and it just came out. So that's exciting. Amazing. Now in that two and a half years, do you, do you feel like your, your, your style and your, your kind of practice has evolved? Are you, are you yeah, still proud yeah. of that work? Well, uh, my process was pretty straightforward. I was really into Sass and Chris Ware, so I just drew with a brush. And, uh, my biggest aspiration was to draw well with a brush and make everything clean. Um, then I learned to do that more or less and it kind of became boring for me. And now I go to great lengths to make everything look a bit crappy on purpose. Yeah. I just use really bad old brushes or cheap paper and then I smudge things on purpose as if I'm, I'm being clumsy. So. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's something I recognized in your work. There's like that um, control um, balanced with uh, sort of immediacy. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, that comes through really nicely. I tried to do the sort of combination of structure and roughness. Yeah. I think um, also that musicality is really important to me. Okay. Um, I always want my stuff to have a sound to it. Uh, that sounds a little demented, but yes. Yeah. Makes sense to me. No, there's like a tiny fanfare to a lot of your characters. There's a, yeah, like a I always wanted to not be static, but to just blare out extremely loud. Yeah. Uh, no. I was like, when I was a youth, I obsessively listened to The Fall, and I think it had a massive influence on me. <laughs> Amazing, of course. Uh, so I, I really like the roughness of you know, the early recording. Yeah. So I always try to, if I'm trying to look for the brush, I want it to look like a brush drawing to have all the bristles and smudges and ink. Yeah. So is there, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you draw in a, like an open explorative way in your sketchbook and how that informs your finished kind of illustration work? Well, I don't actually. Uh, let me find my sketchbook. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, again from my older stuff, this is the cover of the No Brand book, which is coming out in fall. Oh, amazing. 
Um, this is one of my pages from it. So this is when I was drawing in a really straightforward way, just top to bottom. Yeah. You know? And um, when I turn stuff, it looks something like this. And what is this? There are pages and pages and stacks of stuff, and it makes no sense. And I have pages like this, and it just. Yeah. Sometimes it's the same thing drawn a lot of times, or each of lettering and nothing but that. And so I have a, like a stack of things for just a single picture, and then I assemble it all digitally. Um, the point of doing that, I also never use the uh, with oh, I don't know where my sketchbook is. No worries, that's fine, no worries, man. Anyway, I, wanted, I wouldn't show you anything because there are no drawings inside and it's all writing. <laughs> I'm right, okay. But I used to draw outside a great deal, but then I stopped. I'm not sure why. And now I, I just sort of write jokes a lot. My writing looks like this. It's just uh, a lot of stuff, crossed out, arrows pointing everywhere. Right, okay. So for each like little strip with four lines, I have. A pretty impressive stack of papers, and then I edited, edited, edited until there's very little left. Yeah, and when people ask me questions like, mm, I like your drawings, but what's all the words in them? Are they just random? Which is upsetting. Yeah, because of the amount of time invested in them. But do, does the, yeah. do the drawings always come after the writing, or is the, is the writing how you make sense of an initial idea? Uh, I think I write first almost always. Yeah, yeah. Um, I often wonder about that. And um, like Nabokov, one of my favorite writers, he famously said that all people think in images and then use language to translate it. And I often keep that in my mind, but that said, although it does make sense to me, I feel like I first think in language. And uh, being bilingual, um, Sort of occasionally thinking Russian, occasionally with English, and then translated into drawings. So even with illustrations, I write a lot of, kind of keywords and ideas, and then try to figure out what to do with them. <laughs> okay, this is great. Um, is there anything we could see on screen that you could show us through? Um, um, I can show you what happens to all this. Yeah, that'd be great. The next stage. Stuff. This is, by the way, what my sketches look like. <laughs> it's great. Is that, is that some cabinets? Yeah. I, I'm really dedicated to... No, it's actually a layout. <laughs> really dedicated to not drawing well on the, on the sketch face. And I end up, um, end up polishing everything too much. Yeah. Okay, let's see if this works. Just give it one minute. What is it happening? Yeah, it's having a think. It will be on its way. What? Can you see anything? Not yet, but um, I'm just going to... I wanted to be patient because last time it did come through just after a while. Hmm. There's probably too many people in the room. Should we should we leave? I think if you if one of them leaves. Who wants it? Should we? Yeah, the one with the hair. <laughs> you there with the hair? Get out. Um. Why don't we try the request again? We like. Okay. Uh. Let me switch off the video. And then do it. Also, maybe I'll just do share the entire screen. Do you see it now? Yeah. 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 Got it. Oh, okay. So, is it doable or hard to read? No, it's fantastic. Okay. So this is a cover I did for Dubliners by Jacob Choice. I think it comes out every week or something like this. Um, this was really fun and daunting. <sighs> Wow. So it's a okay. This is a front cover. This is a back cover, and these are the flaps. 
Right. So for this I worked for a really long time. And uh, all the stuff that I was showing you, it's all kind of layered here. So, you know, if you look at any of these drawings, like this kid in, um, at the end of Araby, basically every shape is a separate drawing, hundreds of layers. The yeah. cover is actually much more straightforward. Right, wow. Yeah. Um, and is that because if you're working with line, then that kind of gives you a yeah. little bit more of a construct? Yeah, that, well, this is the, the chronicle piece. And this also, I can show you how layers kind of diminish. So it's also really straightforward. Yeah. Oh, no, where is it going? Oh. <laughs> this is the final cover of the Nobrand book. So, also really straightforward. Just design wise, you don't have this kind of literary things on the spine, which right. would be exciting. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my strips about history of speech. <coughs> I'm going to show you how it works. This is, no, this is the line drawing. So it's all just black and white. Then I have uh, a layer of uh, ink washes that I color. Then I adjust a little, add a little more, and a little more. What's that? I don't know. And then there's the, again, the line layer, but then I delete half of the lines, so it's kind of lighter in general. Right, okay. This is really fascinating to see the, the link between your, how you're using Photoshop to, uh, to evolve your line drawing along with shape and colour. I mean, I think what, what I keep coming back to in my head is like how much like, planning do you do before you make a piece and how much of this has to happen on the screen? Oh, okay. Um, well, I do plan things out. It, you can, it really depends on one thing another. Um, why is it not working? And my favorite piece is the one that comes out spontaneously, which almost never happens. Sorry. Uh, this is taking too long. No, it's fine. No worries. Yeah, never mind. Okay, <laughs> so this is the cover for Yellow Jean. Uh, yeah, ever since it's in layers, layers, layers. Yeah. For the back cover, uh, I had quotes, but these quotes I took from a pest control letter that I got, which was written in a really weird style. You may feel the need to notify your bloated brothers, sisters, and sons. So, sisters, yeah. daughters, and sons. So I, I cut that up. And some of them, they didn't even need cutting up. They have these phrases like, your cooperation is needed and will be greatly appreciated. <laughs> so nice. And so I put in names of different critics. Um, actually, none of these people wronged me, but it was kind of a revenge against uh, criticism in general. Okay. <laughs> so I did some toad next for Vogue. Um, this was one of the first time I have like a really layered project. So every, sin, every single thing is a separate layer, which was crazy. And uh, that's what the sketch looks like. It's actually much more detailed than my usual approach. Right, okay, so and just so we can understand this, um, you, you, so you started with a pencil sketch and then everything here on screen has been made um, as, as digital shapes? And digital brush strokes? Yeah. Uh, no, they were all made on paper with a light box with uh, ink and washes yeah. and water. And then I scanned them in, I added them a little bit, and then I combined them. Fantastic. So, you know, if you look at the girl, where is she? Uh, I don't know where she is. Oh, they are almost gone. Well, maybe they should be gone. Anyway, um, I don't know where she is. Oh, there she is. I can't find her. Anyway. It's amazing. Is that it? Yeah, it's great. Oh, that's really good. Um, I can show you some of this stuff. <clears throat> yeah, please. Have you got any sort of sketchbook stuff or like just scans of, of drawings and studies? I'm still interested in how you 
Yeah, well, there's so many kind of um, visual devices that you seem to employ, um, which I suppose describe your style. Where do they come from? Your characters, your your anatomy, that kind of stuff. I have some sketches here actually that I scan. Can you see? Yeah. Just on my side. Yeah, yeah, great stuff. So, yeah, there's some pretty happy with this. Like, th this is the sort of style that uh, I enjoy drawing. Really, really stupid things. Just smudges. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't really know where exactly it comes from. This is the New York sports, by the way. Uh, but it's a lot of uh, exploration, uh, a lot of trial and error. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm extremely impatient as a person, uh, but I spend a great deal of time redoing everything hundreds of times. Mm. So I never ever sit down and polish anything really well, which I think is one of the reasons that a lot of people don't get my stuff at all, and it seems to them really kind of uh, hastily made. But um, you know, to me, uh, in other illustrators and artists, my favorite things are the sketches and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Try to have this feeling in the final product. You know, so here you can see like the roughness of the pencil. You can tell that it's made with a pencil. Nothing else could produce this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for a lot of my commercial work, I do sketches digitally like this. Well, this actual pencil. But then I would finish it. This is how I present my sketches sometimes to the art director. They're usually pretty disparate ideas. Sometimes they're around the same concept. Sometimes they're more conceptual and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, but for this one, I it's one of the most statistic kind of books, and I kind of went over the top, and a lot of them are really silly. <laughs> um, so this is the sketch that was approved, and this is the final, you know, pretty far removed. Yeah. Yeah. But then I think there's a there's a nice like conversation that must be taking place between you and the art director to, you know, I suppose it's that the beauty of working with someone who understands your thinking when they see your sketches. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, this one uh, that I just showed you was for New Yorkers uh, literary blog that I've been contributing for um, for some time, not not excessively, but you know, every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but I certainly have developed a sort of rapport with the art director. You know, he occasionally calls me Roman instead of Roman. That's very very familiar. It's very nice. Just invite him around for dinner. Um. Yeah, I, I do feel like it's great for me. Um, at the same time, you know, I can be completely honest with him in terms of sketches. So if I'm really confident with an idea, I'll send him just one sketch, yeah. which usually I can never do. And with others, I just have to make three or so. Yeah. And, um, Would you not think the? Do you find the dynamic changes when you when you feel you you aren't expected to be subservient to their desires, if you will? Like if you can have an honest conversation. Uh, yeah, it's definitely better, but uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not always the case. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but again, with a lot of people from New York Times, also I know what they're looking for. Yeah. And over the time, I watch what kind of people they hire, and uh, you know they would post the results of their art direction. And I also know sort of what they expect. And it doesn't mean that I try to do the same. But I understand the values a little better. That's very interesting. So, and, and have you have you taken that approach with other sort of markets as well? Are you, are you sort of always trying to keep your eye into what's working well in a commercial sense? Uh, well, you know that is really hard for me to understand. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult <laughs> question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, well, I've been trying to find a way to kind of monetize my work for a really long time, and. Um, I am, you know, not um, like extremely successful in terms of commercial illustration, but people assume I am because I have a lot of fancy clients and I seem to be doing stuff all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, illustration is obviously not the most lucrative field in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, sure, I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. What keeps you going? Hmm? What keeps you going? 
Uh, well, nothing really. I mean, what else would I do? <laughs> okay. Have you got any um, were there any, any pieces of advice um, in general that you could give to uh, a bunch of students beginning to interrogate this discipline? Um, oh, um, I guess uh, just read a lot, do a lot of research, because that's uh, probably what will help you stand out more than anything else. Should I switch back to my face? Yeah, if you'd like to. It's nice to see these images just moving past. Um, I wonder, is there any, do any of you lot have any questions for Rowan? Yeah, we've got a question. Go for it, man. Um, you said that you were doing engineering at university. So, does that mean that you were never really considering illustration as a career path? And then, if that was the case, do you find it quite amazing that you've come as far as you have? Wait, was the beginning of the question? Uh, I <laughs> think, um, sorry, go ahead, Emmanuel. Since you said that you were doing engineering at university. Oh, theory, okay. Yeah, and what was the end of the question? <laughs> <laughs> are you, do, you, do you feel like it's an accident that you've arrived at where you are now? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I have no idea how this happened. I think I've always wanted to be a writer. Uh, but I, I also wonder how do you get people to read your stuff? Yeah. And I still have no idea how that happens. So you said there's, there's been a need to uh, always say something or communicate something? You... Yeah, I, I don't really know. Not really. I, I'm extremely unenthusiastic about my work. I'm, you know, sort of permanently depressed um, pretty much every day of my life. And, uh, you know, it's something I still struggle with a great deal, yeah. and I have no desire to draw or do anything at all. So it's a lot of attempts at self-discipline that sometimes succeed and sometimes don't. Yeah. But I know that if I don't do it, then I'll be more depressed. So it's just uh, an attempt to be less depressed. But every now and then I just sort of stare at it with clarity and I think, well, there is no point to this. I should like kill myself or... <laughs> <laughs> then I feel like that I'm definitely not going to kill myself. I like tea a lot and uh, blueberries. Yeah, <laughs> blueberries are delicious, yeah. As is um, tea. And I think, yeah, you, I think, not, I, I think that maybe there's a, there's a part of it that's about you working independently as well, in that isolated studio, you know, there's, there's a lot of people kind of responding to your work in very positive ways and having emotional experiences in response to what you're making. Is that sure that's something you're aware of or you, you have no interest in your audience? Uh, well, okay, I don't want to get all uh, Dr. Phil about it. Dr. Phil is an American doctor, <laughs> not a real doctor, but he's on television. Right. And he talks about people's problem. And this introduction is way too long. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, in my childhood, I was extremely discouraged from doing anything by um, my Russian teachers, who were quite rude. Um, and I think that really carried with me. So I don't, I don't believe any praise that I get. Okay. But I remember every criticism that I get. Right. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. I'll. Um, I'll email you some criticism, okay. but I'll, I'll try and hide some praise in there. <clears throat> um, I think, well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to just stand here and, uh, and be glowing about what you do, Roman, but I think there's, there's loads of learning that we can take from seeing what you've shown us and, and listening to what you say. It's, uh, it's been really, really valuable. Um, oh, thanks. I'm happy to be ready to help. Yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, maybe we'll have to do it again some other time. Um, is there anything else you guys want to ask Roman? Yeah, we've got a question at the back. Uh, well, the question you've always, something, sorry, sketching something you've always done for fun, or for anything you've done, sort of, do like, sketching things like that, whether it's something you've sort of picked up after You'll have to repeat Yeah, that. no worries. Uh, have you always, like, um, used a sketchbook for fun, or is that something you've learned as you've studied this illustration more? Uh, well, you know, that's really weird, because I, I saw that I've never drawn as a child, but apparently I just forgot about it. Right. I recently came back to Russia, and I sort of went to my grandmother's house, and then um, I saw like this teapot that I 
seen a lot as a child because I was having breakfast there every day and staring at the tea bus. And suddenly I had this cruciate moment, but it all rushed back to me. And then I remember that during summer breaks I would make these kind of comic books, basically. You know, I had no idea what comics is or zines or anything, but you know, um, ostensibly it was comics. Yeah. yeah. And then I just threw it all away. There was no point in that. And for, uh, I don't know, until I was in my twenties, I didn't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, so I sort of started sketching around when I was, I guess, 19 or 20 or so. But, you know, I was uh, immediately at that stage when you don't have any of the naive charm of a child. You have all the horror of sort of deviant art user. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of meaning making to do. But uh, no, I think uh, I've always been attracted to just drawing in general. Not the personal drawing, but other people's drawings. Um, but now that I am a little older, uh, the illustrators I like most are not particularly good at drawing. I'm not a great draftsman. Like my hero is Saul Steinberg. Yeah. Uh, and one of my favorite things that he said that I think I may be misquoted, but he said something like, "I'm a writer who writes his pictures." And you know, if there's something that I want to do, it's that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I, I think you're making uh, really, really positive steps towards it. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a pleasure looking at your work. Well, you, I know we've been talking for a while, but I really, really do enjoy seeing your sketches and stuff coming up on. Online, so it's uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I do post sketches on Instagram um, and pretty much nowhere else. I have yeah. this weird fascination with Instagram because it's really trashy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's great, you know, if you post something you know, on your side, yeah, the goal the art directors might see. Uh, I don't know. It should be professional. <laughs> no, but on do Instagram, that. you know, I can post anything. And I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to have another look again soon. Um, well, just before we end then, can I ask you um, right, a final question? We've asked everyone, but when you're looking at illustration, I suppose you kind of just touched on it with Seinberg, but what do you think is the difference between just good illustration and really, really great illustration? Um, dogs. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I think it's... Uh, pretty complex and there is no straight answer to that. But I, I often think of it in the same terms that you would think of an ending of a novel or a stanza in a poem or something like that. Just a, a, a little bit of something that stays with you. Yeah. So, you know, an image can be as a phrase, you can just read it, look at it, or visually read it, whatever you can call it. And you think, well, I see that now, moving on sort of scrolling down. But then there are certain images that stay with you and I think they have an unfinished quality to them. And uh, if, I, if I had to sum it up, it would be like the author is posing the question rather than providing an opinion. And it's really hard with commercial illustration because most of the time you know you don't have a great access to that freedom. But if you manage to start a conversation with the viewer, reader, whatever you can call her, um, then I think that makes a really great illustration. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. You know, now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever done anything like this. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you've done really well. You know, you. That sounds really clever. I should do this. <laughs> yeah. Come and move, move to Leeds. Come and live in Leeds. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a dump. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you, and um, we've really enjoyed speaking to you. Um, can we all say thank you to Roman? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Paul, I'll be in touch soon, but thank you very much again, and uh, yeah, and have a, have a nice day. Sorry I'm really sleepy. I'm trying to go around. <laughs> you know, maybe you can edit out something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway.
Thanks, mate. Okay, cheerio. Bye. Cheerio.